appreciate it. Welcome Certainly. everyone. Mayor Brook? Here. Commissioner Sarah? Here. Commissioner Vignola? Present. Commissioner Simmons? Here. Vice Mayor Carter? Here. City Manager Babinick? Here. City Attorney Hearn? Here. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome, commissioners and city manager, city attorney, city clerk. Uh, thank you for attending our first virtual meeting. I called this emergency meeting because there's been so much happening in such a short amount of time. And I wanted to make sure that everybody in our city knew that we were united in support of our city management and the management operations that we've been engaged in want to make sure that we're able to give some numbers today as they've been changing recently. I know, uh, Frank, you shared at our 11 o'clock briefing about another emergency order that you are looking to effectuate. So I'd like you to share about that. And uh, just, you know, want to make sure everybody knows that we have ideas towards resiliency once we get out of this, um, you know, uh, mass virus uh, that is about to affect us a little bit more than it has been. So uh, Frank, I know that you've had some information that you want to share with the residents. So if you and there, do there so. before we do that, if I could. Oh, I'm so sorry, JJ. That's Not right, I want to explain something. This is the first time in the history of our city and in many cities that's happening where we are having a virtual meeting. And so uh, we'll walk through how we got there. As we all know, we're under a uh, pandemic under uh, a novel coronavirus disease, COVID-19. On March 19th and March 13th, respectfully, the state of Florida and the city of Coral Springs issued state of emergencies. Uh, uh, executive order 2069 from the governor issued an executive order regarding local government public meetings, which as we all know, we've always been together for. That suspended the Florida statute that requires a quorum to be physically present in person or requires a local government to meet a, a specific public place. Um, it authorized us to utilize communications, media, technology, such as telephonic and video conferencing to conduct those meetings in accordance with the requirements of Section 120 Florida statutes. Consistent with the authority contained in the governor's executive order, in order to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of Coral Springs, we are going to be conducting public meetings and we're going to be conducting them in a virtual meeting setting. We have taken several measures to ensure that the requirements of 120 Florida statutes, as well as the spirit of the Florida Sunshine Law is complied with during this unprecedented time. The meeting that is on now, right now can be viewed on city TV or streaming live online on the city's, on the city's website and is also being um, uh, is put on the city's radio. And for those individuals who may not have access to view the meeting by any virtual means that we've provided, we have access, uh, they have access to the meeting outside in the city municipal complex. And I do understand there are people there. Uh, we ask those people in physical attendance to please practice social distancing, not stand closer than six feet to those that they are around. We sent out a press release, uh, put this on our website, city TV, social platforms, including Nextdoor and the text option Everbridge. Uh, public comments for those who are listening may be received by either phone and email. For those watching now, the local call number is 954-344-5900. To submit written public com comments, uh, please uh, send them into www.coralsprings.org backslash public comment. Um, and for those attending physical leaf, uh, on live stream at City Hall, there's a wireless microphone set up for public comment and a city staff member is out there as we speak, Mayor. So we are fully engaged and I think uh, have more options than any cities that have gone forward so far. We have one item pursuant to the request of the mayor who's called this meeting, which is a general discussion as, as you've indicated, Mayor, on, on, on the cor uh, coronavirus. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, JJ. And I also wanted to explain that I thought it was important for our residents to be able to see all of us as, our, as their elected officials during this emergency time to help assure them of the measures that we're taking and also to assure them that there's hope down the road. I have the sense that there are enough people in the community that are not just concerned about the virus and the virus affecting them physically or others around them, but certainly the economic impact. So I wanted to share with them through staff some of the numbers, uh, some of the phone numbers that uh, they can call, a little bit about what Christie's doing with EDF, uh, and also share with the community 
the COVID update that we provided earlier today. Uh, so I'll share from the first couple of paragraphs of the COVID update. Uh, we, as your city, we continuing our we are continuing our unwavering commitment to protect the health and well-being of our residents from the devastating impacts of COVID-19. We're aware of four COVID-19 confirmed cases as of earlier today in Coral Springs, and we're asking all of you to take CDC recommended preventative steps to mitigate the spread of the virus in our community. We're encouraging you not to focus at this time on the low number of reported cases. Test results are still pending and additional test sites have opened in the Tri-County area within the last 48 hours. And therefore the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases across Broward County and in our city are expected to increase. A list of those testing sites, requirements and instructions can be found on our city website, coralsprings.org and under the testing tab. Residents should continue to follow the CDC guidelines related to hygiene and social distancing. I also I'd ask somebody, uh, specifically Jared Smith, on behalf of Broward Health, our local hospital, to share some information that he has uh, for our residents and with our residents, and I believe he's one of the public speakers. Uh, Frank, would you like to share anything at this time? Sure, Mayor. Um, just to uh, give the, the commission and the community uh, kind of an update as to where we are. Um, we are in emergency management mode. We are activated under a state of emergency. We're working under a uh, current ICS structure, which provides for um, a structure that um, has different department directors overseeing different areas of, of the operation. Uh, myself and, and the emergency manager, Alex Falcone, are uh, overseeing the, the overall incident. We have uh, a group that is looking at budget, strategy, finance, and the uh, community uh, as far as it goes to what kind of fiscal and financial impacts that this uh, event is going to have on our city overall. We have a group that is assigned to logistics. Um, this is a very uh, logistics heavy operation. Uh, there's a lot of need for uh, proper PPE for, for our responders, our employees and our at-risk population. So our logistics folks are, are working within that. Uh, we have uh, a group set up for citywide safety and security. Um, that's, head up, that's headed up by our police chief and fire chief and, and their jobs are to do just that, to ensure that our residents are safe and secure and we're doing everything we should be doing from a safety and security standpoint. We have folks that are um, monitoring and planning for our critical infrastructure. I know one of the things that was a concern early on for people is uh, for, our, for our community is that they went and bought a lot of bottled water. Um, we wanna make sure that that critical infrastructure that our community relies on on a daily basis is up and running, properly running and is, is a, a not going to be affected. So we have a group that's, that's focusing on our water supply, our infrastructure, waste management, uh, talking with other uh, water districts and, and utility providers to make sure that all of our infrastructure is in place, remains in place, and can be relied upon by, by the community. Um, we have, uh, you know, obviously our legal department, you heard from, from our city attorney earlier to make sure we're conducting uh, everything that we're doing within the legal confines. Uh, Christy Bartlett, unfortunately, Christy cannot uh, be with us tonight um, on the meeting but she is overseeing our private business uh, and enterprise. She's working very closely with Cindy Bree from the Chamber of Commerce and their group to look at every opportunity that is out there for our businesses, from uh, loan opportunities to uh, partnering opportunities, um, supply chain opportunities, uh, anything and everything we can look at for our, our local business to make sure that we can provide them with whatever resources available Christy is overseeing and, and looking at that. Uh, communications is something that is paramount here. We need to have regular, clear, and concise communications with not only our community, but our employees. And we have a group that is, that is overseeing that function for us um, and uh, putting out the information to the public, as well as putting out uh, information to our employees. And then we have uh, our incident support services that is supporting all of the groups that I had before mentioned. Um, every morning, 
city staff is meeting and going over the previous day's functions and activities and looking at what new has come about and what actions we need to take. The commission is briefed on a daily basis as to uh, what's going on, what our actions are, where we're going, and, uh, and those types of, of things. There are a lot of emergency orders being put in place right now by the state, by the county, and by the city. The one thing that we're focusing on is trying to get uh, to make sure that we have some sort of uniformity to these orders that are being put out to try to reduce any confusion to our community, to our businesses. Um, our, the safety, health, and welfare of our community is paramount. That's our number one focus, and that's what we will continue to focus on, Mayor. And if you have any other specific needs or the commission has any needs for any further updates, please let me know, and I will have the staff member responsible for that area do so. Thank you, Frank. Uh, and I just want to say you guys are doing an incredible job. I get great feedback from the residents that are in touch with me, and uh, I, I couldn't be more pleased with the uh, diligence that you all are applying. Um, I, this time, I would like to open it up. Uh, Frank invited questions from the commission, so if there are any questions that you'd like to ask at this time on your behalf or any residents' behalf, please do. And then I'll go to public comment. Um, uh, City Manager uh, Babinet, could you uh, elaborate on uh, code compliance and what their function is during this uh, state of emergency right now? Absolutely, uh, Commissioner Simmons. Uh, the code compliance is helping us on, on a couple different fronts right now. We've kind of taken them off task with their usual jobs. We are concentrating on anything that has to do with life safety and uh, community health measures. Uh, code compliance is helping us with our senior population and our adult living facilities, our um, um, dependent and independent uh, adult living facilities, assistant living facilities to make sure that our at-risk population is taken, taken care of. So we've, we've realigned their mission to deal with the urgent needs of, of life safety and the community health at this point. Uh, and what would you, I guess, um, you know, let's say something happens and a, a resident gets cited for something, just any, in, any you know, issue. Um, you know, what should that resident do? So I would urge them to, uh, to reach out to us. Uh, we, we have our hotline up and running. I'd ask Lynn Marshall to join in at this time to kind of give those instructions as to the different media that our residents can, can reach us on, uh, whether it's social media, our hotline, or our website. Lynn, can you weigh in on that, please? Good evening, everybody. It's great to see your faces. Uh, we'll give you some updates on how we're handling that. Um, specific to what you just asked, Commissioner Simmons, uh, we really are pushing people to our main number. That is 954-344-1001. Uh, the reason we're doing that is we can obviously uh, put them in touch with code enforcement personnel, or we can provide them with the answers that they need. Uh, we really want to make sure that we have that one hub where these questions are starting to come in and, and we're getting information out to residents. We understand their concerns. Um, City Manager Babinick, do you want me to go ahead into a whole communications brief? If you could do a quick overview, I, I think that would answer some of the questions the commission may have. Sure. Uh, I just wanna keep everyone informed. Right now we're up to update number 11, press release number 11. Um, when our releases are issued, uh, we share it with senior staff and the city commission. Then we push it out to all those who are signed up to receive our press releases. If you're interested in receiving our press releases, it's important for the public to go to our website and opt in. Uh, in addition, we then share uh, the press release on our website. Uh, we push it out on our social platforms, including Nextdoor. Uh, we share it with our employees instantaneously. And then we've begun using our text uh, message option in. So our residents who might be interested in just getting a text message when a new press release is out, we encourage you to text the number 888-777 and use the keyword Coral Springs. That's one word, Coral Springs, to receive those updates. Our website and uh, city TV, and city radio remain on emergency mo mode for right now, so you can easily obtain 
information. Um, you can find City TV on Blue Stream Channels 25, 25.2, 72, uh, 725, and also on AT&T Uverse channel 90, I'm sorry, channel 99. Um, 1670 on AM radio is effective right now as well. Again, our call center number 954-344-1001. And we remind our residents, use that number instead of our non-emergency number for calls that are related to city operations. 954-344-1001. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that. Mayor? Joshua? I have a couple more questions. All right. Um, uh, City Manager Babinek, as far as um, uh, you know, certain businesses, uh, I know there's been a lot of confusion and pushback on you know, uh, the essential versus non-essential businesses. Uh, and I had um, a constituent reach out to me asking about uh, you know, pawn shops being on the list of uh, businesses that weren't being closed down. Uh, and we were wondering, I guess, or they were wondering as well, you know, why was that, you know, for instance, uh, not being closed down? And uh, could you speak a little bit uh, more towards that? So um, uh, the city attorney can, can correct me if I'm wrong on this one. That was in the order that was, uh, that was issued by the by the uh, county, and I believe any pawn shop that uh, uh, hosts the sale of firearms or ammunition was excluded from uh, that business uh, closing down. Um, City Attorney Hearn, is that correct? Right. Part of the state law, is, 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 as I think everyone knows here, we actually have an active lawsuit, is we cannot, uh, the full preemption of anything involving firearms and, and, and cities cannot in any way delve into that uh, interference. So um, we do have a, we have done a detailed analysis, uh, going through our business tax occupation of each and everything that's listed as a, uh, a, a business in our city. And we've articulated what is not considered essential based on that, uh, county, um, ordinance. Um, so we also have a hotline for that, which I guess, um, is, is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chief or a city manager, but it's uh, it's the same hotline to call in for uh, for uh, anything that Lynn has, correct? That's correct. Okay, and uh, last question. Uh, thank you for answering them so far. Um, city manager Babinick, do you um, foresee an issue where, let's say restrictions are being loosened at the federal level, um, but here on the ground, we have a different scope of what's going on, or here in our cities, we have a different scope of what's going on. Uh, do you think that we would take the steps to make sure that we are doing what we feel is necessary for our residents? So yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. And um, you know, we've, we've seen uh, some press conferences coming out of the national arena that, that are saying, you know, business is gonna be back open, um, I think it was by uh, Easter holiday and, and those types of things. The number one thing I can tell you, the most important thing that we have to do is is really the um, to to prevent community spread is to make sure that we are keeping our social distance distancing, and we're keeping those that are infected away from those that aren't. For every one person that you have that's infected, you can pretty much count on them uh, infecting another two, which that's how the numbers grow so quickly. Um, right before April 1st, uh, we were just under a thousand cases uh, nationally. And I think the latest numbers have us uh, as of today, uh, 24 days you later. April, you said April 1st or you meant March 1st? I'm sorry, March 1st until, uh, until March 24th, uh, we're over 40,000 cases now. So I don't, I don't foresee that being possible, but we're going to continue to look at everything uh, that we have at our disposal to make sure we're enacting orders and um, that are in the best interest of the safety, safety and health of the community. So we would, we would uh, analyze that when the time comes. Um, but I, I see restrictions and orders being put out that are stricter in nature, not loosening up anytime soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other commissioner have any questions? Just a compliment. Um, I'm getting lots of compliments from residents about the uh, the way the city's handling it, the information updates, especially from uh, Alex and Dr. Antebi. 
they've been very helpful, very informative, and all the um, press releases and updates with Lynn's team, and of course, led by Frank. Great job, even though it's a tough time. Agreed, agreed. Commissioner Sarah? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I also wanted to echo what uh, Commissioner Carter just said. We've been receiving a lot of compliments on how staff is rolling things out. I've been very impressed with uh, City Manager Frank Babinick and his leadership and the entire staff and support as, as well as our first responders. Uh, got to see firsthand uh, some of their work and um, very, very, very um, pleased. And the residents need to know that we are on a, a bridge call every morning at 11 a.m. and city staff is working diligently 24 hours a day to make sure that uh, our interests within the city are uh, in the right place. I did have a question for our city manager, uh, Mr. Babinick, as far as the parks are concerned. Um, could you just give uh, the best explanation you can as to why the parks are closed? Because I think some of our residents are confused. They're getting mixed messages saying that it's okay to maybe walk in their neighborhoods, but they can't go to a local park and walk around. Sure, um, before I do that, if I may, um, I, I would just like to, uh, I appreciate the comments about uh, the work that's being done, but I would like to recognize our staff. Um, the employees we have in the city of Coral Spring are, Coral Springs are second to none. Um, their, their dedication and their commitment to the community is unwavering. And uh, I truly am appreciative of all the hard work they're doing. Uh, having phone calls with them at 10, 11 o'clock at night, um, ask, you know, last minute information coming in, uh, they, they jump right on it. So all of our employees, um, that are out on the street performing their duties to our administrative employees. Are, they're just doing a tremendous job in, in, in staying on top of this the best we can. The other thing I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to ask uh, uh, our city attorney to, to uh, just jump in real quick. The, the call at 11 o'clock has been mentioned a couple of times. I'd like to just explain a little bit that that's an informational one-way call. So if there's any question as to what that call's about, John, you just want to clarify that real quick for me? Yeah, appreciate it, uh, Frank. Uh, so what we do have there is a call that the only speakers are um, staff, either Frank, myself, Alex, Lynn, and uh, the uh, elected officials are prevented from speaking at all. Um, and there are no video uh, of, of anyone's uh, faces at all. So there's no ability to have a two-way communication. It's similar to when um, the city manager or I will send out an email and BCC the commission. Each one of you get it. Each one of you are not allowed to react in any way. And so we, <clears throat> we are able to run the city because uh, obviously we're updating you for about an hour uh, every, every uh, at 11 o'clock, which would be a five hour update for a bunch of staff. So um, that's what this uh, technology has allowed us to do. And uh, we appreciate all your attendance there. And it's, uh, it is uh, not an issue with uh, with any uh, sunshine uh, uh, laws at all. So thanks for uh, bringing it up, Frank. No problem. And uh, Commissioner Sarah, I'd like to have our our um, emergency manager Alex Falcone uh, come on and address the parks question. I think he would be the best one to do so. Alex. Yeah. Thank you, City Manager Babnick and uh, Commissioner Sarah. So. Our goal with this is to continuously reduce the spread of this virus. And so our parks are, are really, really great in the city. It's somewhere where all of our families like to congregate. And so the order to close the parks was specifically intended to help with that social distancing, um, keeping people at least six feet apart uh, and, and preventing that spread. As city manager Babnick mentioned, um, everybody who gets this, it's anticipated that they will give it to at least two other people. So by keeping us away from common areas, um, preventing our folks from touching playgrounds, touching uh, gates, or just being congregated, it helps to prevent that spread. So that was the rationale behind the closing of our parks and uh, suspending some of our league play um, and all the other activities that we enjoy. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner Sarah? I'm good, thank you, Mayor. All right, Commissioner Vignola. Thank you, Mayor, I just wanted to, um... Thanks, Dad, for all their hard work. I know it's uh, it's not easy, and it's a lot of uh, time and effort put into this, and, and not just uh, during the work days. I know into the evenings and the weekends, um, but we appreciate everything you're doing for our residents, and um, we're very blessed to have you. 
So I, I want to uh, not only thank staff and management, but I also want to thank all the health professionals in our community. Uh, there are a lot of people that are putting themselves at risk, especially in our hospital. And, um, you know, we're, we're praying for you too. And um, just really appreciate everybody's work. So at this time, with nothing further from the commission, and not that we can't get back to each other later, I would like to allow for public comment. I'll save my questions for uh, the city manager for a little bit later. Uh, so is there a speaker that is ready at this time, Deborah? I see Jared. Hi, good afternoon, Mayor Brooke. Uh, my name is Jared Smith. I'm the CEO of Broward Health Coral Springs. I'm accompanied today by Dr. Lai, our medical director over our emergency room services, and Allison Van Dever, our regional manager over the emergency room. We appreciate the opportunity to come uh, to City Hall today and share with you uh, what's happening actually at the hospital. Uh, first and foremost, thank you very much to all the commissioners that are here today, uh, the city manager, uh, police, EMS, um, and emergency management. Uh, the collaboration that we're having with the city is truly impressive. Uh, just from a hospital perspective, our main focus is, is managing the resources that we have, as well as planning for any potential surge uh, throughout the hospital, whether it's uh, uh, physical resources, staffing resources, equipment, et cetera. So I'll just uh, highlight uh, some of the things that we're doing. Uh, from a resource perspective, we've canceled all our elective uh, cases, our non-urgent type of uh, services. Uh, this way we can utilize uh, not only the staff, but the PPE in other locations and free up space in the hospital for other potential uh, patients uh, should the need arise. Uh, from a surge perspective, we really have ramped up our plans throughout the uh, organization. Um, several examples from an emergency room standpoint, we now have a, a triage tent outside of the hospital uh, where we are conducting a medical screening uh, exam. It's a very quick exam usually takes three to four minutes. Uh, and then from there, we're able to triage and then determine where is the best location for uh, patients, uh, whether it's to go in the hospital or into a secondary tent uh, where we're treating and releasing patients that come in that could be potentially um, at risk for COVID. Uh, in that secondary tent, uh, we have all the services that we need, including a portable x-ray so that we can screen the individuals, treat them and send them home so that they can self uh, quarantine if necessary. and provided that they don't need any additional services in the hospital. From a surge uh, standpoint, uh, that's happening throughout the whole hospital. Uh, we've expanded our ICU capability. Um, we've increased our physician coverage with our intensivists, which are physicians that cover our ICUs, our anesthesiologists that can also back up the ICUs uh, and staffing throughout. We've increased emergency department personnel and physicians. We've increased our hospitalist type of coverage. Same thing from a staffing standpoint. We have fast-tracked additional nursing personnel uh, to come in should the, the need arise. Uh, from a bed perspective, I mentioned earlier that we've increased our ICU uh, capacity, but we're increasing other locations that we could provide care uh, for patients. We've increased the number of vents that we have, uh, as well as other equipment. Uh, we have restricted all visitors uh, to the hospital. Um, any person that comes in the hospital, whether you're an employee, a physician, a clinician, a tech, or uh, anybody that needs to come in the hospital is screened uh, with a temperature check so that we're making sure that we take all precautions uh, and keep uh, our staff and patients very safe. Um, earlier in the dialogue, you had mentioned about our uh, screening uh, facility. As you know, we did set up a drive through testing site um, in uh, uh, Coconut Creek, Coral Springs, or East Coral Springs area. Unfortunately, we will be temporarily uh, suspending operations at that site uh, because we uh, do not have the access to the test kits. There's an extreme shortage around uh, the country on those test kits. So we need to um, deploy those test kits to the hospitals uh, so that patients that need to be admitted that will be able to test those patients as well. So um, everything is uh, full force. Uh, the preparations are going very, very well. I'm happy to take any questions. And again, I'm here with Dr. Lai if you have any uh, medical questions as well. We appreciate everything you guys are doing too. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes. Jared, I, I just, uh, this is Frank Babinick. I just wanted to thank you and your staff. Uh, you guys are, are working extremely hard and and our EMS personnel can't speak highly enough of, of how you're handling this from the hospital perspective. So thank you. Well, thank you. What can we, or what, what can be done about getting more test kits uh, to us sooner than later? Right. Yeah, well, we're doing everything we can as an organization, as well as at uh, the state level and the Department of Emergency Management. We've reached out to, you know, all the national commercial labs such as Quest. So I believe everyone is 
uh, uh, working tirelessly on that. I know Representative Daly and his team are, are coordinating with the state. Uh, so, you know, uh, per perhaps, uh, I guess, just when you have conversations with rep uh, the representatives at the state level to just uh, reemphasize how important that is, but they are working on it. So that, that makes me think about something, Jared, and that is without a test, am I correct that what might be suspicious as being COVID-19 is not considered for numbers as confirmed. Right. Do you so, know that or Alex? Well, yeah, so um, without a test, you'd never be able to confirm if the person truly has it. Uh, the recommendation though is since there's truly no true treatment that's available for COVID-19, is anybody that is uh, suspicious of symptoms, is, uh, has a high fever, a heavy cough, whatnot, that they should still self-quarantine. And I think that goes along with the message that the city has had all along. You should self-quarantine because the risk of spread is, is quite significant um, and really stay at home, uh, protect the vulnerable population, protect the seniors and the elderly. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Any, anybody else have questions uh, for Jared? I have a question. Go ahead, Commissioner Simmons. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hey, Jared, uh, thank you for um, joining us today. I know you're, you're uh, running ragged these days. Um, uh, but I have two questions, uh, two quick questions. Uh, one of them is something that I recently heard, and, and I was wondering if you could elaborate on that further. Uh, for women that are um, in labor or about to give birth, uh, are you all no longer allowing the, um, uh, the spouse or the partner or a, you know, a single family member to be with that uh, woman during that time? Yeah, uh, so we just made a recent change to that. Again, it's to protect uh, not only the birthing uh, mom, uh, the hospital, and uh, everyone as well. Is uh, At this point in time, they are allowed to bring in one person, one caregiver, one spouse, one, uh, one person. Um, but once that person needs to leave, they're not able to return. And so mm -hmm. that this way we can limit the traffic in, in that area. Okay, thank you for answering right. that. I think there are a lot of people that, yeah, there are a lot of people that uh, are, you know, are, are, are imagining some pretty dark pictures uh, with that scenario. Uh, my second question, and I'm not sure if uh, there's been any more data on this. I asked this uh, when we last saw you at our commission meeting a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but as far as, um, you know, those that have been affected um, have been recovered or have recovered, uh, are, they put are, are they able to be reinfected again? Right. So let me uh, ask Dr. Lai, uh, the question is whether or not you could be reinfected again. My sense is it's still too early to tell. We don't know enough about the disease itself to be able to give a clinical opinion on that. But let me uh, have Dr. Lai share his thoughts. Hi, Commissioner Simmons. But yes, uh, I mean- Hello again, sir. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Yes, and, and everyone else. Um, but basically, yeah, I mean, we have heard reports now where they did describe uh, an individual that was, you know, uh, recovered from it and then they tested negative. And then later on again, they felt like the, this person was reinfected again. So the numbers are low. That was the first report that we heard. So, you know, it's all going to depend on the criteria of like, you know, how long are these, are they waiting to retest the individual? You know, how many tests are going to be negative? And you're going to have to get criteria to that. And I think once further, more detailed testing comes along, you know, that the answer to your question may become realized then. Understood. Thank you. I actually have one more question, uh, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Um, and it could be either for uh, Mr. Smith or, or Dr. Lai. Um, so, you know, the reports and everything are coming out and obviously there's a, a, a sludge of news information about, you know, people being affected here, different age groups being affected here. Um, but I know that uh, LA just recently had their first, uh, I guess, child uh, pass away from uh, being affected with the coronavirus. Has there been a change in, you know, because when this first came out, it was seen that it was more geared towards the el elderly and just those with compromised immune systems. But has there some, has something changed or is it just that people didn't take the precautions uh, well enough that now it seems that uh, younger people are being infected and, and different things like that? Uh, yes. Um, so, I mean, basically, um, from what I'm seeing, like in the front line and, and just kind of describing from this community here alone, I mean, it is the elderly population, but we are also, you know, seeing like a younger population involved as well. I have not seen the extreme young population like pediatric wise yet, but, you know, the, the virus is ever mutating. 
And that's what we are, you know, kind of uh, always keeping a lookout for and just just can't uh, stop reiterating, you know, how much prevention we need to take from, from continuing to spread. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll, and, and my last question, I'm sorry, I know I keep coming up that's with okay. questions. But, um, at what point do you think we would know that, or I guess, or see uh, data that we have started to flatten the curve? Great question. Great question. Um, and I don't know if Dr. Antevi might have an answer for that as well, but go ahead, Dr. Lee. I, I think it's, it's difficult with that because with the actual, you know, limitations of tests available, you know, many patients that we may soon suspect that may have COVID, we may not be able to test here. We will have to kind of divert them to other resources where they are still currently testing. Uh, we are providing patients, you know, with that information, but just with the pure limitation of tests, you know, I don't think we're going to be reflecting a true prevalence of the disease locally. And if, 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 Someone, what I've heard is that if someone is, they feel like they're experiencing symptoms um, uh, due to the COVID-19, um, they call and then they're often told to just stay at home and self-quarantine and rest. Uh, at what point should that person absolutely seek um, medical attention to be, you know, or, or some, you know, at what point should they actually be at the hospital? We, we actually, you know, we follow patients closely like that, and we definitely have to kind of educate them about any symptoms where if they start getting short of breath, if they start having chest discomfort, or just, you know, unrelenting fever, not improving with just home supportive therapy, which would just be rest, you know, Tylenol for fever, lots of fluids, you know, we, we kind of uh, let them know. And, and if they feel like they're, they're not able to kind of deal with it at home anymore, at that point, it's time to come in. All right, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Some excellent questions, Commissioner. I really appreciate it. I did get a text from uh, Representative Daly uh, during this meeting saying that as of a half hour ago was the first time he had known of the shortage and he's been working uh, with Jared Moskowitz uh, to get more test kits available to us. I'd also let you know that I had at least two or three different, maybe four, uh, suppliers of uh, different equipment, including test kits, get in touch with me. Uh, Frank, is there a number that these people should call? Uh, should I connect them all to you uh, as I'm getting word about test kits of availability and mass and whatnot? So um, any, any of that information that you're passing along to me, I'm, I'm getting over to our logistics uh, folks. Um, we can have them reach out to the hospital to pass along that information if uh, if the hospital uh, needs those resources. I know that the hospital typically has other supply chains that they go through, but uh, if, they're, if they're running short on supplies, I'm sure they'll take them wherever they, get, they can kind of get them from. So we'll make sure to share that information with uh, Jared. Thank you. Jared, anything else you want to add? No, we appreciate your time and uh, thank you to the city for all your hard work and efforts. It's uh, truly incredible to see all the resources that are out there are supportive of, of the community. So thank you, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Deborah, the next signed speaker, please. And I'm not sure if we got Jared's name and address, but I, mean, I know we need to do that. Our next speaker is going to come in from our call center. Just a moment, please. We do have his address on file, so we, we, we'll put it in. Great. Thank you, John. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Jim Moran. I'm the CEO of First International Title. Uh, we're located at 1999 North University Drive in Coral Springs. And I'm calling to find out or get clarification on the business closure effective immediately that you guys had put out a few days ago. Um, you specifically uh, list title companies as an, uh, a non-essential business. And uh, I wanted to get clarification on that because um, Although we're a title company, we, we do closings. We're also a financial services company that does refinances and real estate closings. And we've got quite a bit of a, of a, of a inventory to get closed. Um, and according to the, the county um, order uh, 20-01 in section 3G, they specifically list um, financial companies and insurance companies, which we are both. And I want to get a clarification on that. If 
you guys could reconsider listing title companies as a non-essential business um, for the city. Jim, before I ask John that question, can you let me know your last name again and your title company? Uh, my last name is Moran, M-O-R-A-N, -N, and, the, and the title company is First International Title. Our corporate headquarters is located in Coral Springs. We've got about 30 branches throughout the state. Gotcha. Thank you very much. JJ, are you able to answer that question for? We're, we're familiar um, with that issue that came up this morning in a conversation. And there's a definition of financial institutions with Homeland Security that we are looking uh, into and, it, and uh, we're coming out with our interpretation. The actual order that's being referred to is a county order though. Um, and we, uh, one of the things that we are working on and we'll be talking more tomorrow about is us uh, entering a separate order that would clarify that type of uh, issue. If it is listed as a financial institution under the Homeland Security, then we would be able to count it as a financial institution. And our preliminary is that it very well may be. We just are looking at the document. It just came up today. Okay, that's good to know. And uh, one of the reasons I asked for this meeting to clarify some questions that I thought might come up. So, uh, so are we able to get in touch with this gentleman afterwards to let him know? Or should he just be in touch with us? I'm sorry, were you speaking to me, Mayor? Uh, I was actually uh, speaking to John or Frank. Yeah, if we have his contact, we will definitely. So I don't know if Deborah does. If not, uh, she does right. that. So, and if he's doing. Uh, um, uh, Deborah has my contact. Okay, perfect. Then we'll, we'll reach out to you tomorrow. All right, great. Thank you both. Thank you for attending the meeting. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Deborah. And our next speaker, Deborah. Mayor, I have one comment that was submitted through our public comment online, and it's from Yvonne Valdez. She commented, I would like to know why the city does not impose a total lockdown, parenthesis, no people out of their houses unless they go to the pharmacy or to buy groceries. Follow the lead of Peru, for example. It is almost impossible for us parents to keep our youth at home. Please help. Okay, I, I think that's an excellent question. Um, I'll, I'll share with you a little bit from my perspective, Yvonne, uh, why I wouldn't be putting forth a total lockdown at this time. Uh, one, I think we are taking uh, great precautions with what we've done so far. Uh, and a total lockdown at this time, I think would be a shock to our system. I'm not sure it's necessary, but I couldn't tell you from my own humble opinion that it's not necessary. So I truly defer to our operations manager during this emergency to our city manager. So mayor, um, city staff is currently working on an emergency order uh, that would put um, basically a uh, uh, safe at home type of order, stay at home type of order where um, folks, you know, the best place you can be right now is, is at home and isolated away from others. That's the only way we're going to truly defeat this, um, this virus. And any of the experts you talk to, you know, you talk about flattening the curve, you talk about doing some other things, but flattening the curve is simply just pushing cases out that are gonna happen in the future so the hospitals and medical professionals can get caught up. What we wanna do is we wanna try, right now we're in, on the defensive, right? we wanna to get to the offensive where we're ahead of it rather than behind it. And the only way we can do that is truly by slowing the spread of, of this virus. This virus is very readily spread from person to person. However, it's very susceptible as well. So, uh, you know, washing your hands frequently, soap, it, it does, just doesn't live through soap. It can't live through hand sanitizer. So that's why we're pushing uh, so many of these, these uh, protective measures. Um, we are working on something though that, that would um, provide for uh, a mechanism to uh, keep people at home and, and, and off the streets. And uh, we should have more information on that tomorrow. Alex, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I think city manager Babnick really gave a good overview. Um, we've consistently tried to make sure that the decisions and the emergency orders that we sign are are pragmatic and are in line with what the county and the state is doing as well. 
Um, as a municipality that's bordered by many other municipalities and not far from another county, it's really a, a whole community type of response that's gonna be most effective in this. So we're trying to work with our, our other partners around the county to make sure we're implementing the same measures um, and making sure that it's uniform across the board. So we are working with our partners and as city manager Babnik mentioned, we'll have um, some additional recommendations tomorrow for the commission um, as we continue to work towards a, a unified uh, solution here. And Mayor, uh, if, we, if we do do that emergency order, it'll be safer at home. And I think people need to just start adhering to that now. Um, that is the best place for you. And you should only be going out if you need essential supplies. And if you're going out for essential supplies, you need to take protective measures, meaning stay six feet away from other people. Um, if you're exhibiting symptoms, don't go out. Make sure you're washing your hands. Don't touch your face, your mouth, your eyes, your nose, all of that. Um, it's very important to practice good hygiene right now. Yeah, and, and like our city manager says, the safest thing is to stay at home. That's the safest thing for you. It's the safest thing for us. It's the safest thing for neighboring communities. So to limit your visits outside of home to truly what's essential and really think about what you might need, maybe even over the next you know, four to seven days and try to get that in one trip instead of multiple trips over multiple days, you're gonna help you know, flatten the curve if not do a lot better than that. Uh, is there any other speakers, Deborah? Are there any other speakers? Mayor, we're all set. Everyone is fine. Great. So I just had uh, two follow-up questions, possibly a third. Uh, one is a minor thing, and actually you answered about the title company, John. Uh, somebody said, hey, why can't I play tennis? Um, the guy will be on the other side of the court. Uh, I'll be on one side. Why can't I play tennis? Obviously, you know, there's a hunger to do something outside of isolation. So if uh, maybe, Alex, you can address that. Why can't you play tennis now? Yeah, so Mr. Mayor, uh, good question. You know, like we mentioned, our concern was mostly with the, the facilities as well. Um, so by closing our parks in totality, we're able to help prevent that spread, um, prevent that non-essential travel out in the community. You know, this virus, uh, it, we're still learning about it, but there's reports that it lives on surfaces for quite a long time. So opening the gate to get into the tennis court or, or anything you touch in those areas, it helps prevent the spread or it helps promote the spread. So if you have multiple people moving in and out of a tennis center throughout the day, um, it, it becomes impossible to, to keep up with the uh, disinfecting of those locations. So as staff, we felt it was the most prudent decision for us to close down all of our recreation facilities, um, including the tennis, the tennis center. So the, the sport in and of itself, yes, you're social distance, you're far away, um, but everything leading up to that was where our concern came into play. Great. And Mr. Mayor, uh, if I may, Perfect. just on that as well, we want people to get outside. We, we're, we're not saying you have to stay in your house. What we're saying is you have to stay with the family members that you normally live with within your house. So you can go out in your yard, you can go for a walk around your neighborhood, just don't commingle with others outside of your house that aren't exposed to the same things you're exposed to. So we, we encourage exercise. We encourage you to go out and get some sun. It's just we have to have it in small controlled groups in order not to spread the virus from one to another. Great. So one of the questions I also had, Frank, and I've asked you this before, it's a difficult question to answer because there's so many unknowns about the virus and, uh, and we're not China. Uh, is there, you know, we've mobilized, is there any vision at this juncture for demobilization, any vision where we might be, you know, eight or 10 weeks, or really should we just kind of hunker down and, you know, be ready for almost anything? So, so Mayor, that is a, it's a very good question. And it's, it's an, it's a question that can't be answered right now. And the reason it can't be answered is, because if you listen to the experts, the, the, the folks that are studying this closely, they're, they're basically telling us that um, this could go anywhere from eight weeks to eight months. Um, it could reemerge uh, when the flu season comes back around in, in the fall or winter time. So as we look at this, we, we need to be able to get to a manageable level. And what I mean by that is, um, there, there are test kits that are supposed to be being released this week or next week that are basically 45 minute test kits. And they're, they're, they're point of service test kits, meaning they don't need to be sent out 
to a lab for results. Mm. Oh, wow. So those kits hopefully should be widely available soon. They're also working on some, some drugs that have been around for a while that seem to show promise in treating this, this virus. So I think once our, our scientists kind of catch up with what's going on here, just like they, you know, they have Tamiflu for, for folks that are sick with the flu. And if somebody takes Tamiflu, it'll actually stop the symptoms, shorten the symptoms, or it may even prevent them from further getting the flu. So when we, I think once we start to get some advancements in those areas, we'll have better answers to that question. Um, our team is working on demobilization and what that's gonna look like on the other side. And they're working through multiple scenarios that take us out eight weeks, four months, six months, eight months, or a year. And, and kind of what that looks like. But our, we, we want to get our business community back up and running as fast as possible. We wanna get our community back to some sense of normalcy as soon as possible, but only if it's safe to do so. Excellent, I, really excellent, well thought out. And uh, I think that's something that our residents really needed to hear. Uh, I think it's important that you know people brace for change and brace for impact, and not be lulled by the small numbers at this juncture, because so much of that is based on the lack of testing that's been available up to date. Uh, I have nothing further on my end. I don't know if any of the commissioners have anything else to add. Wrap up with any final questions? And Mayor, before you adjourn, I'd, I'd like to, if, if once the commission's done, I'd like to add one more thing. Absolutely. I'd, I'd rather he go ahead and add, add that now before we have anything extra to say. Okay. Um, I'd like to give our police chief a, a chance just to talk a little bit about uh, the safety and security of our, our community and from his perspective, what our community should be doing uh, from, from a, a law enforcement standpoint. Uh, chief Perry, are you on? I am. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, I will tell you right now that we are not experiencing any significant uptick in crime. In fact, it appears as though many people are, you know, uh, voluntarily taking the steps that they need to and uh, staying home and, and staying, uh, you know, in their houses sheltered. Uh, I had a conference call this afternoon with the other chiefs and Sheriff Tony. And as of right now, there are only two jurisdictions that have uh, implemented a curfew. Uh, one just occurred uh, today, which is Hallandale, and the other was Coconut Creek. Uh, they are both in a curfew from 11 p.m. till 5 a.m., I believe. So uh, right now we are monitoring uh, our calls for service, which appear to be down. Uh, we're monitoring our crime trends. Um, which again, you know, appear to be uh, flat and, or down. So we appear to be in pretty good shape as far as all that goes. Uh, every day we're working with our fire chief and, you know, we're doing the best we can to respond to any of the calls that we have that are uh, related to this virus. Chief Perry, what can the community do to help our police department be successful in, in, in getting through this together? Well, the best thing that we can do is just follow the advice that, that you laid out earlier. Uh, clearly, uh, the, the more that we self-isolate, the more that we uh, shelter in place, uh, you know, it's going to help us not only uh, not have any disrupt disruptions out in the community or, or anything that would tie up law enforcement recesses, resources, but definitely uh, help us, you know, um, you know, get through this uh process faster. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. So I, I did have one more question, uh, City Manager. Uh, are we making any phone calls to residents that we may not otherwise be reaching? Len, can you um, uh, come back on and kind of walk us through what we're doing for some of our uh, population that, that may not uh, have or participate in social media? Absolutely, uh, City Manager Babinick. We are working on a uh, print campaign uh, utilizing the addresses we use for Forever Young, our newsletter. Um, that is mailed to all the homes of persons who are 60 plus. Um, some of those homes uh, have multiple family members. So we have different areas that we're, we're working on to reach those residents. The second thing we're working on is a senior VIP line. I do not wanna announce that number just yet because it's not live, 
Um, it will not be interactive where you can ask staff questions, but every day, those who might not be using online technology will be able to call in for comprehensive updates about changes in the city, uh, any type of information that may be important for them to know about city operations, and of course, uh, common health questions, uh, anything that we believe they might need to know. Um, as far as our vulnerable population, and I, I don't wanna speak on behalf of Alex, he oversees the vulnerable population registry in emergency management. Uh, but our call center has called down to our vulnerable population. Um, and it's more of a check-in, making sure they have what they need, um, making sure they understand the importance of remaining home as much as possible and different resources that are available to them. Sounds great, thank you. Commissioner Simmons? Uh, yes, I have a, a couple of things. So I don't know if anyone else wants to go before me, but um, the first thing I would like to ask about, uh, and, and Frank, maybe you can uh, you know take this under wraps and maybe we can work this out a little bit later, but um, I had asked Luam this morning if um, there was a way that we could work on something a little light, and maybe Lynn, you'll like this idea, uh, is if we do like a, a citywide virtual dine-in, right? Uh, and we can set that up however, right? But like, you know, we encourage, I know they have the Great American Takeout thing going on right now, but like for this, this will be a particular Coral Springs event where, you know, we are encouraging people to get takeout from somewhere, you know, from the restaurants in Coral Springs. Uh, and, you know, we all have dinner at like a certain time and it's like an event and that, you know, it's on social media and there's something, you know, we can do with that. Um, even create a hashtag and all the stuff like that. Just something a little light, um, you know, during this time period. And I think that that could be something we can do. Uh, and I would love to um, talk more about that, you know, a little bit later if we need to, but you know, that's that. So um, I don't know if there's any comments to that. I like that idea. Okay. And that's great. Uh, second thing uh, to all of the uh, nurses and doctors and all the medical professionals that are in the hospitals in the front on the front lines right now, working uh, countless hours to um, provide aid and care to folks uh, coming in uh, during this crisis, uh, we are all with you. All of our thoughts are with you. Uh, and we are giving you as much encouragement and love and light that you need uh, to get through all of this. Um, you know, you all are telling us what we need to hear from the front lines and we are doing our best to make sure that everyone adheres to that. Um, Cheyenne uh, still goes to work. She works at Cleveland Clinic. She's a lab technologist uh, and she looks at it as her duty, um, you know, to still go in and make sure that she's doing her job uh, you know, at, at the hospital. And so um, everyone at this time period, we're all affected and we're all going through this. Uh, and so all of the medical staff, you know, thank you for everything uh, that you're doing. Uh, to the city staff, um, you know, you all are <laughs> running just as uh, many hours as well. And we really do appreciate how thorough you all have been, uh, how forward thinking you all have been and kind of um, even, you know, uh, you know, prepping for questions that you, you would think that we would ask uh, without us even have to ask. And so, um, you know, your work is not uh, going unnoticed. Um, you know, you are constantly out there uh, on social media, constantly interacting with residents. Uh, so you all have continued to be a presence and a voice uh, during this time period. And, um, you know, we definitely uh, made the right decision in making sure that um, uh, Frank Babinet became our city manager. And so we are really appreciative of what you all are doing because, you know, this is a crisis. You all have families. And some of your family members may, you know, be a little worried about everything that's going on, but yet you are still dedicated uh, to the residents and to the city. So we really do appreciate everything you all are doing. Um, so thank you to you all. Um, the last thing, couple of questions. Um, I was curious as last week, earlier last week, I opened up my email and I, we all received a memo uh, about the authorities of the mayor during a special emergency. So I was curious as to why did that email get sent? I didn't, I, I, I was clueless as to why that got sent out. So if anyone could help, you know, help me out, fill me in on that. Sure, I, I asked what the authority was of the mayor and John sent back what the authority was of the mayor and they copied everybody on my request during emergency situations. 
Understood. And so I guess, you know, I'm, I'm a little confused because I didn't understand the nature of even today's meeting. Um, I didn't think it was necessary uh, because of the fact that the city is doing such a great job of interacting with the residents. I know that when I've gotten questions, uh, multiple questions from residents, just like any of us up here, uh, because we all represent the same folks, um, that I forwarded those questions immediately to city staff to make sure that I was giving them a response or anything that wasn't uh, that was out of line of what, um, you know, we are doing as a city. Uh, and so, you know, I know you had said that Mr. That this meeting was for us to look united and all, you know, why not? I don't think anyone thought we weren't united. Uh, I don't think that uh, we weren't doing anything to where the residents didn't know what was going on. I know we are all still putting out individual messages as well as city pushed out individual messages. Uh, so I, I got to tell you, I just did not agree with having this meeting because I all of the work that needed to be done is being done. And the reason why we have the city manager that we have is so that in these times of emergencies and crises and when things need to be done, we have that point person to take care of that. Uh, and so, you know, I obviously, if a meeting is called, I'm gonna be here because I have a duty to the residents of Coral Springs and I will do what I have to do. Um, but I can't help but feeling like you know, this is something that, you know, you, wanted to present that you're leading and I get that you know we have a lot of time on our hands and so you know we want to make sure we're out there doing stuff and letting people know that we are working for them but when we explain to them and we should be explaining to them that we have put all the right people in place because we have we were forward thinking of what we knew we wanted our people uh to to see in times of emergencies and that we have done our job and and Frank is the product of that uh, and so I just you know I want to make sure that we are conscious about how we are positioning and presenting ourselves as leaders in this community. I firmly believe that in order to be a leader, you have to know when to follow. And this is one of those times. So um, with that, I'm done. So Commissioner Simmons, I got you. I disagree with you. We've had a meeting, our first meeting since the 13th. I have the authority to call the emergency meeting. You did not make a motion at the beginning of the meeting to cancel it because you didn't understand the reason after I explained it. You asked maybe I didn't do you that. asked, I didn't do that you I asked didn't, maybe I, six, I, seven, I maybe nine well, questions. I didn't interrupt you. Please don't interrupt I me. Didn't want to, you I, asked maybe six, seven, eight, or nine I questions. I didn't ask the council meeting because I did not think that would be proper. There are other commissioners on here that may have had questions or wanted to have this meeting. And so I wasn't going to do that. That wouldn't have been fair to any of my other colleagues on the day. Can I finish? Yeah, so I explained the purpose before, and hopefully many other people see the purpose. And the main purpose is for the residents to hear from all of us at a city commission meeting, have questions answered that we either had or they had, and to get a most, most current update through a city commission meeting, which we haven't had since the 13th. We did cancel the commission meeting uh, based on a majority of people wanting that commission meeting canceled, and I supported that cancellation. I'm not here to lead above anybody. I'm here to lead with you with the leaders here in the community and also to follow and also to listen. And I did a lot of listening here and so have you. I think the meeting had a purpose. I think it has a purpose. And I think ultimately the residents will decide whether this was a waste of time or not. But ultimately I think we can agree to disagree. And I think one of the most important messages that I'd like to share with the community is that we have differences and we have differences at all times. And sometimes these differences are magnified during times of crisis. And what I would urge everybody, including all of us, is to respect each other's differences. So at this point, with you, Commissioner Simmons, on your perspective, I would ask us to agree to disagree. And we can absolutely uh, agree to disagree. Um, I would hope that the residents who have, uh, you know, are watching this found this helpful. Uh, I would not want them to sit and watch a city commission meeting and not get any value from it. So I would hope that it was helpful for them as well. Uh, but when I look at what our city staff is doing, the fact that we have those briefings that are within the bounds of sunshine, um, we have those briefings every single morning. I thought that was perfect because we are able to take that knowledge and go out and interact in the way that we need to. And that everything that all the people need, all the questions they want answered are being run through the city so that we are all united on one front. So. Uh, we, have, we can absolutely agree uh, to disagree. Yeah, and this, and this was not intended to do anything other than share what staff is doing in a positive way. I have no negative things to say about staff, our city manager, 
or even our residents who I think are cooperating. Vice Mayor Carter, anything for you to share? Yes, as long as we're here and we're talking to the Coral Springs residents, and as long as you're at home and you have access to the internet, please fill out your census form. It's very easy to do, takes less than five minutes. I know Commissioner Simmons did his because I saw him post it on social media. I did mine and it was very easy. So I just want to remind everybody, please complete your census forms. It's very important for us going forward in the future. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. 2020census.gov. <laughs> Commissioner Vignola. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, chime in on the uh, just prior conversation, um, you know, I understand why you wanted to have this meeting, um, but I also want everyone to understand when we were talking about all the work and things that staff is doing, by holding this meeting, staff is um, taking away from some of their other duties and responsibilities on things. So I don't want to make this a habit of going ahead and doing this, where I feel like staff and, and Frank and Lynn are doing a great job of getting information out there to the public and keeping them informed. Um, I don't want to take them away from the responsibilities that, that they are burdened with right now in this time of crisis. So um, you know, the good news is we went through this, this whole exercise and we've tried our first meeting like this, but I don't want to make this a, a regular occurrence while we we're holding emergency meetings um, throughout the course of this event. I'm, I'm glad you were here, Commissioner Vignola. Commissioner Sarah? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I to would like to uh, try to get to some consistent messaging and um, city manager Babinick, uh, maybe in a future briefing, we can kind of come to some type of, um, I guess, process when it comes to how we're rolling out information. I know that each of us as commissioners, our hearts in the right place and we want to do the right thing. Um, ultimately, though we need to be consistent in how we're rolling it out. I'm not sure what I should be sharing and not sharing. Not that we're not keeping anything from the public because everything has been transparent, but I don't want to overdose them with um, the coronavirus updates, uh, especially when it's pretty much the same report, just a few sentences that are different. Uh, I think that in my opinion, uh, as a commission, uh, we were brought together for a purpose. Uh, and, in our lifetime, and uh, we'll have to see from a historical perspective, but this is gonna be definitely one of those defining events. And we definitely need to work together and collaboratively um, support staff. Uh, as far as staff is concerned, you guys have uh, done an amazing job. Um, every single city employee has uh, put uh, their best foot forward to make sure that this city um, is not only um, moving in the right direction when it comes to um, the necessary steps to defeat this virus, but also um, have really done a great job modeling and leading the way. Um, kind of mentioning what uh, City Manager Babinick is thinking about working with the legal team under John Hearn and the entire amazing group that's in that department, trying to make sure that we are taking necessary steps to protect the city of Coral Springs, despite maybe what's going on at a federal state or even a city level around us. Uh, this is uh, something that needs to be taken very seriously. I know a lot of residents are out there doing the right thing. Um, unfortunately, I think there are some that are taking it a little bit too lightly. Uh, in order to get ahead of this, we definitely need to take uh, proactive, aggressive steps to make sure that our residents stay safe and stay healthy. Um, but ultimately, uh, the sooner that we can get beyond this, obviously, uh, the faster we can economically get back in line. Um, you know, not all the answers are going to be provided today because as mentioned in this commission meeting, it's constantly changing every minute. Something new is happening uh, at every level. And Ultimately, we have a sense of responsibility as city commissioners, the five that are leading uh, Coral Springs, but also the city staff to uh, make some tough decisions that are going to be for the betterment of the city as a whole. And not everyone's going to be super excited with every decision we make. Um, but ultimately, please know it's in the best interest of everyone. Um, 
Yeah, I just want to close by saying that um, life has defining moments, and this is definitely one of those for the city. We're exploring a lot of things that we've never had the challenge of dealing with in the past. Ultimately, we need to, um, you know, grow through some of our successes, but also learn from some of the things that we may have had some missteps. There's no perfect scenario in dealing with this pandemic. pandemic. So we just definitely need to try to figure out whatever steps are necessary to move forward as a united front, taking staff's lead, taking their suggestion, processing it, pushing back when we need to, but ultimately just rem remembering our sole responsibility that we have to our residents, and that is to lead by example, to stay calm, um, you know, to make sure that we're doing what's in the best interest of the group as a whole while ultimately doing a great job representing our families. So I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity of coming together tonight. I know that we canceled the last meeting, which I think was the right thing. Um, you know, today the, the meeting was called pretty quickly, but I understand why. Um, but I definitely wanna get into better practices of how we're gonna move the messaging forward. And I hope that uh, through a future briefing, we can hear from city staff on how we can do that because uh, social media, there are a lot of people following us for what I, and, and for whatever reason, uh, they're taking every word that we're saying as, you know, the gospel. And, um, you know, we're not here to really, um, you know, answer the questions. We're here to guide and protect people and give them information and then kind of defer in some instances to city staff on how that should be handled. So, uh, I just wanted to close by, you know, everyone, please, please stay safe. Uh, ultimately, everyone has a role and a responsibility in this, and we have to work together to get through it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, you know, we're in unprecedented times, and the ultimate message to share with you all is if you can stay home. If you're sick, please stay home. If a family member, somebody in your household is sick, please stay home. Uh, we hope you are getting the messages and are following the rules that we're sharing with you. I have tremendous confidence, not only in our staff, not only in management, our leadership team, and also in our citizens and collaborating, cooperating. Uh, we've got great resources here in the community. And yes, there, there is a lot of uncertainty there are many unknowns. Uh, we are uh, dealing with a virus that's exponential. So I would just urge you all uh, to brace for change, be as agile as you can. Please follow our rules. Uh, we've got great up updates on the city website and through press releases and uh, so many social media platforms. Uh, you have the numbers that we've shared with you and you can also text, I'll reiterate something that Lynn Marshall had shared before. You can text the keyword Coral Springs to 888-777 to get updates. And uh, you can listen in on 1670 AM. Uh, thank everybody for your cooperation, collaboration, being here. Frank, uh, for you and all the team, for all your preparation uh, all throughout this uh, pandemic. And uh, thank you, John, for all of your preparation and dedication to the city. I wish everybody a great night. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you. Uh, very quickly, uh, if I could, I apologize, but I uh, want to remind everybody we will be meeting virtually again at our regularly scheduled meeting, but it will be virtual April 1st at 9 a.m. Great. Thank, thank you, Mr. John. Hey, Mr. Mayor, Howard, if you could, uh, uh, yes, Frank, you Mr. Mayor, if you, yeah, if you could just remind our community, Facebook Live with uh, our medical director, Dr. Peter Antevi and, and Alex Falcone at four o'clock on Monday, we do a Q&A session. We've been having uh, over 10,000 people join us on that. Uh, so it's a, it's a great way to get some information. So Monday at 4 p.m. Facebook Live. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Deborah, as well. Bye. Bye.